I had trouble with the clicker last time. Uh, I'm Jamie McDonald. Um, I'm just happy to be here tonight and uh, looking forward to chatting with you for a few minutes about our business and my journey and the topic uh, I've chosen was finding your why. Uh, so the first thing, uh, I was here a couple years ago and Alex made me do a talk all in emojis. And so I stole one uh, slide from that last talk. And it's a simple thank you. And there's a couple things I want to give thanks for. Uh, I love these two pictures. They're so golden on the internet. I'd like to thank Alex. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank Alex and Jason for starting TechTO and giving back to the community. Uh, I just think what they've built is awesome. And it's super exciting to be part of it. The second, yeah, that's worth a cheer. The second thing I'd love to give thanks for is that we live in this amazing country. Uh, every time I read a newspaper and watch what's going on in the US, I think about how lucky we are to be building our companies here. Uh, and I don't know if anyone read the awesome report or kind of proposal that Ed Clark put together for the city of Toronto to attract Amazon, which might be net bad for me if it happens, but uh, this is a fantastic place to build companies and I'm, I'm just excited to be Canadian today. Uh, so. In all of these things, everyone talks about uh, their company a little bit. Uh, I'm going to spend a very short amount of time doing that. Uh, in our view, the future of accounting is invisible. Uh, if you've ever been in a business and been asked for a document, raise your hand, like a bank statement, a receipt, uh, anything annoying from your bookkeeper. I think that's basically everyone in the world who's ever been in business. Uh, we're building solutions to make that problem go away. Uh, we call our vision the system of record for all financial documents and just working towards this goal of making bookkeeping and financial reporting automatic and invisible. Uh, the last time I was here, Alex is a good luck charm, was two years ago. Our business, uh, I just looked at our subscriber count uh, since then. Uh, it's 15 X, so I hope that two years from now I'm invited back and it's 15 times bigger uh, than it is at this moment. So here are my discarded FinTech TO comments, uh, topics. Uh, the five minute HubDoc ad, which I have 10 minutes and I've just done one minute of that. Uh, my marketing guy, uh, Yusuf, who's awesome, meet him, wanted me to talk about scaling our business through channel partnerships. See the hashtag at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> lessons learned, blah, 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 blah. And one thing I really care about is Moneyball as the best business book of the last 25 years. Uh, and I can talk about that all night if you want to do it over a beer. So I thought about, I'd talk about something that I'm passionate about, me. Uh, and so that could be my Halloween outfit, my tribute to Abraham Lincoln, Ahab. Uh, but you're going to see a narcissistic presentation about how great I am and all the things I've learned. Uh, so what's my why? And you'll see in much smaller font below uh, and how you might find yours. Um, so you'll see this picture of me at my desk working hard in an empty office. I want to build a unicorn with my little unicorn. Uh, what's it called? A horn. Uh, so the other thing is... I've become accounting famous in my years of working in the accounting world. So you'll see me with accountants. When I go to trade shows, it's like a mob. Uh, I have thousands of people coming up to me and trying to get selfies, and, and that's the result of all of those things. So I've achieved that unlocked amazing. Uh, and then the other thing, our company isn't very well funded, unlike Well Simple, who will speak after me. Uh, I, I have a business in Australia and I fly coach every time I get there and I'm proud of it. And so I'm going to make Super Elite this year flying nothing but tango. Uh, <laughs> but, but really, what's the reason that I do it? Uh, so I want to inspire these humans. Those are my daughters. Uh, they're in every presentation I ever do. Uh, they're, they're, Exactly like that. Uh, <laughs> so how, how do I go about every day working on inspiring them? Uh, first thing I want to do is have an impact. Uh, I cried at my desk last week when Gord passed away listening to Strombo's artists. So hat tip to Gord. Um, if anyone, millennials, 
Gord Downey. He's the lead singer for the Tragically Hip. He's important to old white Canadians like me. Uh, and so there's an awesome article in the Times about how Gord Dine is like in the US. Imagine if Springsteen, Dylan, and Michael Stipe rolled into one and he passed. Uh, he's had an amazing impact on Canada. And I want to have an impact for my daughters in the same little way. So uh, Pratchy mentioned that I love to sing, but I can't. So I'm not going to be Gord. Um, but maybe I can build another one of these. Uh, and, but how does that help? Uh, so early part of my career, I was working at a place called Expedia. And I've got the kind of Don Corleone mafia there. Uh, and it, it looks like my slides are messed up somehow. But some amazing companies were built out of the Expedia mafia. Uh, companies you've heard of that are public are about to be like Zillow and Glassdoor, uh, which were started by colleagues of mine. And this awesome little mortgage tech conference co company that was started in the mortgage crisis of 2007 uh, called Sparkroom. Uh, Sparkroom at its peak did 3 million recurring revenue and employed about 20 people. Uh, but what it did was actually kind of amazing. So the Sparkroom Mafia, as I like to refer to the group of amazing people that I worked with there, have built four little companies in Toronto. Uh, Employee Touch uh, was acquired by Ultimate Software. They now employ more than 100 people in Toronto. Uh, Ocean uh, is causing to send the just a little startup, 10 people. Uh, Truecentric employs about 25 people in Toronto. They were acquired by Acquia. And then there's this awesome little company that my partner and I started called HubDoc. And we're up to 60 amazing people in Toronto. I was told by my team that I'm here to hire and inspire. So that's what I'm trying to do. We are hiring. Uh, and so the second thing that I'm trying to do for my daughters is show them, set an example by trying to get better every single day so that I'm better next quarter than I am this quarter. And this is hard. Uh, but the power of compound interest is my favorite math lesson that if there's anything I want to teach those 10 and 12 year olds is that lesson. It's basically if you leave your money in something that's compounding quickly, it gets really, really big. Uh, so if you don't know the concept, learn it. It also applies to learning every day. So my favorite writer about learning is Warren Buffett's partner, this guy Charlie Munger really old, really smart. Uh, I constantly see people rise in life who are not the smartest sometimes, not even the most diligent, but they're learning machines. They go to bed every night a little wiser than they were when they got up. And boy, does that, particular, does that help, particularly when you have a long run ahead of you. So spending an hour a day trying to get better, I totally fail at that, but I lecture my daughters on it all the time, and I do strive to get better every single day. Uh, helping others get better, and this is the last item in my story. Uh, so part of my job at HubDoc is inspiring others to get better every day, mostly because it's in my self-interest to do so. Um, and so I'm going to start with my teammates and tell a story about a guy who works with uh, named Matt. You'll see Matt on the left picture there demoing at our office. And one of his skills is demoing our software anywhere around the world. And so he started in a weird doctor's office at Davisville & Young. And there he is in the Melbourne airport uh, doing the same thing. Uh, and so the story is, this is a guy who his prior job to HubDoc was a ski guide in Japan. Uh, he came to work for us mostly because he, he would say yes to us. Uh, and he just kept doing more and more by trying hard and getting better every day. And now Matt runs our business in Sydney. He's got half a dozen people working for him, has an opportunity to grow that business from zero to a million bucks in MRR over a few years, and that's what he's going to go and do. And I love telling that story because it's about people growing. Uh, and so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, and the last thing, uh, this is me riding a pony at an accounting conference where I'm famous, uh, is I want to have fun. Uh, and I want the people I work with to have fun because we spend too much time every day uh, at our desks and in our Slack machine uh, to not be having fun. Uh, so we're hiring. This is the ad part. I like smart people and people who are smarter than me and make me scared when I go into meetings. Uh, I like getting better really, really quickly, and that's what we promise our company, having fun and, and winning. Check us out. Uh, I think there's about a dozen of us here wearing the, wearing the colors, which is what we always do. Props to plans well, lots of colors. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be here all night. Let's talk. Uh, 
I do want to say hi to Jonathan, my rep from RBC, who we've emailed maybe a thousand times but never met in person. And I hope there's an entrepreneur in the audience who's looking to challenge these guys and disrupt them because it'll make us all better. I'm here for questions. Any questions, anyone? What does HubDoc do? <laughs> Alex. So you said you try to spend an hour each day learning. So what do you do to learn? Like, is it blogs, is it books? What, what's your preferred method? You know, I like reading. Uh, I don't do enough of it. I start my day reading, but that's mostly media consumption, and I'm unquestionably, increasingly questioning the value of that. I think the way I've learned the most in the past year is learning from my team and, uh, and from people who are better than me at stuff, and they're teaching me stuff. And so the example I'd be, give is uh, we hired this awesome guy that'll run our design team uh, three or four months ago, and uh, you know, in, in four months of working together, he's made me way, way better. And so that's the easiest way. And then I think, you know, the internet is full of content. You just have to be reading the right things. And uh, there's no, there's no, like that hour, that idea of spending an hour a day is, it, 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 it compounds quickly. Uh, yes. Uh, what are the main things you've learned from being an entrepreneur? Uh, it's really, really hard. Uh, <laughs> I, I spent some time yesterday as I was brainstorming my topic, uh, watching some of the other videos, and, and I think uh, there's a lot of supposed glamour about being an entrepreneur or running a startup. Uh, and I think all the guys, uh, folks on stage who are talking would, would say what they remember most is it's hard and it's stressful and there's no easy day. Uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, and I think my biggest lesson and strength as an entrepreneur would be ter tenacity and persistence to just keep going. Uh, you, you really have no choice, uh, especially when you take money from others uh, and you have people relying on you for their, their kind of daily rent that you just got to get up and keep going. And I think uh, that's the thing I like the most about being an entrepreneur is that fighting. Hey, uh, had a chance to speak with a couple of your sales reps here, and they mentioned that there's a lot of interest in the company. What do you think is driving that? Yeah, I think uh, I've never worked at a place with uh, the product market fit that we have. I always say, like, like we track MPS like everybody, and it's... Uh, it's it's ridiculously high to the point where you like start questioning the numbers. We feel like our product is wildly immature and unreliable for what its promise is, but the people we talk to and sell it to every day, uh, they still love it. So I think, uh, like, like many great technology companies, uh, the things that motivate us are delivering amazing experiences for customers, and the way we plan on doing that is building a great product that solves a problem, and I think that's uh, really the key to building any decent technology business. Oh. Hi there. Hi. Um, do you have any advisors? And um, if you do, have they been beneficial? Or, um, or in what ways have they been beneficial and detrimental? Uh, I'm not a big believer in like the formal advisor role. So... I have a lot of mentors slash colleagues, uh, people who run other companies who you share notes with and commiserate with over mistakes they've made. I find that extraordinarily valuable as talking to, especially people who are kind of 18 months ahead of you on the growth curve, who might have gone from whatever, two million in revenue to 10 and to talk you through that journey. Uh, we also have investors, so board members have opinions on, uh, on how you should run your business and grow your business. Uh, you know, I find it, the, the neat thing about great investors is they've got patent recognition across many different companies. The tricky thing about it is uh, there might be some cognitive bias towards seeing those patterns always in your business. So uh, I, I, my, my theory on advisors is take advice from as many people as possible and ultimately you've got to uh, calibrate your opinions and make your own. 
All right, one last question. Yep. Um, as a co-founder of a business, do you have any time at your early, early time of founding a company that you're almost giving up on this? Like on a verge of giving up your whole business that you started with? Absolutely. So uh, I told this story last time, but the early days of HubDoc, we built a consumer application to solve the problem of bills and statements for consumers. It turns out that we built an awesome product for that, but nobody really cared and we couldn't figure out how to make money. And so we had a whiteboard literally at our old office that was like, how can we turn this into other ideas? We still had investment dollars that we could either return or, or try something else. And so we had five ideas, one of which included Bitcoin, and if we'd only done it, we would have been rich beyond our wildest dreams. But uh, we decided to take the product that we built and uh, make it a B2B product that solved problems for accountants and bookkeepers and, and the businesses that they serve. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jamie.